In our second screencast on MP completeness, we will review what the set is and show an initial problem that is MP complete. To recap the definition of MP completeness from the previous screencast, and also we'll add here a, a language perspective, uh, theorists reason about MP completeness in terms of formal language theory. They think of problems as being like languages, where you encode the input to a problem in bits, zeros and ones, like you might describe a graph using binary digits. And also you encode possible solutions to the problem as, as bits. And so those two strings taken together can be seen as a language. The uh, language corresponding to the problem is a set of all strings that describe instances of the problem along with their corresponding solutions. So the, the um, problem of solving a problem is akin to recognizing the strings in a language. So we can interchangeably use the terminology of languages and problems. So a language or its corresponding problem is MP complete if, first of all, it's an MP. And we've already discussed in the previous screencast how that means we can recognize a solution in polynomial time, that there exists an algorithm A that given um, X, which is the string de describing the problem, and Y, which is a certificate describing the solution, that this algorithm will output either 0 or 1, uh, no or yes, depending on when, whether y is a solution to x, and that it can do so in polynomial time. So those are the languages or problems that are in NP, non-deterministic polynomial, that can be recognized um, or decided in polynomial time. Then the completeness part comes from the fact that, uh, by this definition, a problem is MP complete if you can take any other problem in MP and reduce it to that problem. It's complete in the sense that if you can solve the complete problem, you can solve every problem in MP in a polynomially related amount of time. So if you can solve the MP complete problem in polynomial time and then you have a polynomial reduction, you can solve every other problem L prime in MP in polynomial time. Now, there's some uh, problems or languages that are not uh, decision problems, and they're not, um, so they're not an MP. They're, uh, for example, optimization problems, like find the shortest path is not a decision problem. It's an optimization problem. But you can turn that into a decision problem, like, for example, does there exist a shorter, shortest path uh, uh, no longer than length k? So those problems are said to be MP hard. They have the... Um, completeness part, but they're not in MP. So because we know that P, the problem solvable in polynomial time, are a subset of NP, and because of the completeness part of the definition, we have these two possible situations. Uh, this is um, a theorem, a known fact, that if any MP complete problem can be solved in polynomial time, then P is equal to MP. The two sets are the same. Uh, so we know that P is a subset but we don't know about the equal part. On the other hand, if any problem in NP is not polynomial time solvable, then no NP complete problem is polynomial time solvable. Because if the other ones were, then by their completeness, you could reduce one into the other in polynomial time, and that would contradict the other one not being polynomial time solvable. Uh, and we've, no one's been able to prove which of these uh, if parts are true. So we know that the, the implications are true, but we don't know which antecedent is true. But what we think is that the second one is the case, and that the world looks like this. And we have all the problems in MP. We have those that are MP complete, that solving any of these would mean solving all the problems in MP in the same amount of time. And then we have the subset of them that are polynomially solvable. And so it is believed that there are problems out here that are not polynomial solvable. So before we go too far in talking about the set MP complete, let's uh, show that there is something in the set. Uh, we need to have an initial problem in MP complete, and we're going to do that by showing that this problem circuit set is MP complete. And this gives us a toe in the door uh, by using the definition of MP completeness, uh, which is repeated here below we can show that other problems are MP-complete, first of all, by showing that they're in MP, 
In other words, showing that a solution can be polynomially time uh, tested. And then we're going to use this reducibility um, property to show that um, every other problem in P is polynomially time reducible to that problem. And so we're going to do it by building off of circuit sat. Since circuit sat is MP complete, if circuit sat can be reduced to some other problem that we want to show is MP complete, such as sat, then that will get all the other ones because um, we can just draw an arrow saying here any problem in MP complete can be reduced to our initial one. And if that one can be reduced to our new candidate, then by transitivity, any other problem in MP can also be reduced to our candidate. And then we'll just build up the um, tree of known problems that way. It's important to pay attention to the direction of reduction, uh, that we're going to reduce the known problem to the new problem. It has to be an arbitrary instance of the known problem. It can be reduced to a carefully constructed instance of the new problem. And that shows that if we can solve the new problem in, in polynomial time, then we can use that reduction to solve the known MP-complete problem in polynomial time. And because it is MP-complete, that means that um, we can also solve all these other problems in polynomial time by reduction. Let's now look at our first MP-complete problem. So the concept of MP-completeness um, was defined by Cook in a 1971 paper that showed that this set is not empty by showing that circuit, circuit satisfiability is MP-complete. Circuit satisfiability is the problem of giving a description of an arbitrary Boolean circuit, such as this is just an example here, uh, consisting of AND OR NOT gates. Um, the question is, is there an assignment of, to the input values such that the output value here will be 1? Does such an assignment exist? And if it does exist, the circuit is satisfiable. This is, of course, an important problem in the construction of real computer circuits, um, digital circuits of any kind, because if there is a portion of your circuit that is not satisfiable, it will never serve any useful function, and you should remove it. So recall that we have to show first that circuit sat is in MP, and then we have to show that every other problem in MP is polynomially reducible to it, which is the hard part. To show that circuit sat is an MP, we just need to show that it's possible to write an algorithm A that given um, X a description of a Boolean circuit and Y a certificate for a solution, which would be an assignment of Boolean values, uh, that it can compute uh, 0 or 1, you know, determine whether it's satisfiable in polynomial time. And that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we can see two ways to do it. The um, easier way of writing A would be to say, give a assignment of a Boolean value to every single one of these wires. So there's a variable here for every wire. And uh, the certificate Y has to have um, values for all of those variables X. And then we just have to deal with each circuit one at a time. We just have to ask, for example, um, if uh, X9 is 1, is X6 or X7 1, and so on. Or you can say that the certificate Y only need to uh, consist of um, the inputs. And then the, the algorithm A would be a little bit more complex, but it's still polynomial time. You can see um, in polynomial time and the size of the input, which is the number of circuits here, propagating, saying, well, if X1 and X2 have such and such a value, then X5 has to have such and such a value, and then propagating through to the uh, conclusion at the end. So circuit sat can be um, decided in polynomial time. Now showing that it's MP hard is harder. <laughs> this means we have to show that any problem in MP can be reduced to this problem. So Cook showed that circuit sat is MP complete by showing that for any problem in NP, any problem in NP will have an algorithm A that will, given a description of the problem X and a certificate Y, will um, decide that problem. So imagine there's a machine that can run that algorithm, and that machine state will be expressed by the description of A, the algorithm, the program counter, other machine state, the inputs X and Y, the problem and the certificate, and other working storage. And this machine will iterate through some states in which these um, 
items, you know, the program counter and other uh, state variables change uh, in uh, running A. Well, you can turn that into circuit set as follows. Um, you can hardwire into the machine M all of these um, state variables, just hardwire them into the Boolean circuit rather than having um, memory locations storing that state. And then for every state transition that the original machine M would make, you just make a copy of the circuit. So that's what all of these iterations are here. Um, every time the state of the machine changes, we just make a copy of the whole circuit and um, rewire it as necessary to capture the state of the machine. And then so this essentially con constructs a giant circuit, a giant circuit sat problem that no longer um, has um, memory. It just has everything hardwired into the circuit. And then you can give it to circuit sat to say, is there a uh, set of Boolean uh, input values that satisfies this circuit? And by answering that question, you're answering the arbitrary question that was posed by the original problem in MP that was um, solved by algorithm A. Now crucially, since A runs in polynomial time, there are only a polynomial number of state transitions. So we have a polynomial number of these copies of the machine that have to make, and the whole construction can be done in polynomial time. So it's a long and complicated proof, but it gives us an initial problem showing that circuit sat, if you can solve circuit sat, you can solve any problem in MP. So we have shown that there is an MP complete problem. And in the third screencast, we will go on to show, use this to show that other problems are MP complete.